Tony Wilkins, your host and senior pastor of the Kingdom Center. It is my prayer that this message will glorify God and be a blessing to you as well. Enjoy. First Corinthians, second chapter, the sixth verse from the New King James. It reads this way. Verse six says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would have not, excuse me, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, and I love this, this is one of my favorite, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I'm going to read that again just because I love that. Amen. Verse 9 says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep, the deep things of God. Yes. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Verse 12 says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the, thing, which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Catch that. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. This is the word of God. Let us all say amen. amen. And I want to speak to you just briefly this morning. Uh, I'm going to ask a question as a title this morning. And the question I'm asking is, what is your condition? Amen. Amen. What is your condition? Let us pray. Most holy and ever wise God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and stand behind your sacred desk. God, stand among your, your loving people. God, we thank you that you've allowed us the opportunity to share together, God. And I thank you for the opportunity to give me a word to share with him. So, God, I ask right now that you just touch my heart, my mind, God. Take away any inhibitions, God, any distractions, God. Remove them right now in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you just touch the heads, the minds, the hearts, and, and the ears, God, of every one of your people here today, God, including me. And, God, allow us to hear from you freely. God, I ask that you just remove me completely from this place. God, that you just take over my mind, my heart, and God, take over my tongue. That the word that comes across my tongue will be a word that you would have your people to hear and not just what I want to share. God, this is my prayer, and I pray it in the mighty and matchless name of the love of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. So we're asking the question today, what is your condition? Amen. You know, I, I, I want to begin by just sharing with you, you know, uh, as we go through life from time to time, we, we have a tendency every once in a while to get sick. Amen. Every once in a while, something, something might happen. Some of us are healthier than others. Some of us are not as healthy as others. But everybody at some point in time, you know, comes up with some kind of illness here or there. You might, maybe all you've dealt with is a common cold or, or maybe you, you know, you've had the flu bug or, 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 you know, maybe you've dealt with something more serious or maybe you've dealt with something more minor. But all of us have dealt with some type of physical illness. All of, all of us have had an ache or a pain or, or, you know, you've done something or had to attend to something. And, and, and so it becomes interesting to me that as we, as we go through life and, and, and we develop or, or we, uh, we commonly go through illnesses, it becomes interesting to me that it, it becomes very important to us 
to make sure that our illnesses are taken care of in the proper manner. I mean, you know, it, it, it's... It's important to us if we have a common cold, you know, that we, we're just so irritated by the fact that we sniffle and we cough. And, you know, it's just so irritating. We, the, the dryness of the throat is irritating to us. And, and, and so we, 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 we find we, we will go through all kinds of means to try to, to, to rectify the issue. We, we, we'll take all kinds of cough syrup and, and you know, and we pay, pay special attention because, you know, you got to be careful about what you take according to what's going on with your body. So if you're, you know, if you're a person that deals with blood pressure, you can't just take every kind of cough medicine because some of that stuff is dangerous for you. In fact, I've known some folks who have lost their lives because they took something that shot their blood pressure up and it made it, made it an issue. So, so you got to be really careful about what it is that you, you, you put into your body depending on what your body can handle. Amen? So, so it's interesting to me that when we have a physical condition, y'all, some of y'all already know where I'm going with this. It's interesting to me that when we have a physical condition, we, 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 we make it a point to, to, go, to go ahead and try to take care of it as quickly as possible. That, that cough is irritating, and, and we don't want everybody to hear us coughing every time, because when people cough, when you start coughing, people start looking at us, and you know, people start staring at us. And so we get concerned, let's be honest, we, get, we don't get as concerned about the cough and the irritation of it as the fact that it brings attention to us. Amen. In, in the in the, uh, in the setting that we're in, so so it's interesting to me that we'll take care of that. If if, if we're sniffling and sneezing all the time, then we try to find a way to rectify uh, that issue because we don't want folks looking at us like we nasty when we blow in our nose, or we don't want folks you know we, we don't want folks standing around us spraying Lysol all the time because they're worried about get, catching some kind of germ that we might be sharing. So 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 when we when we deal with physical. Impairment. When we deal with physical illnesses, it's interesting to me that we make it a point to, to take care of them right away. And we're, we're even more sensitive about things that, that will become visible to others. We're, you know, messing around, and, and y'all know how we do. We mess around to get a zit on your face. Y'all know, ladies, y'all know you, you, you're ready to put a little bit of extra makeup on because you don't want everybody to be looking upon you and, and seeing that spot on your face. And, and, and the attention that it brings to you is something that you don't desire. Amen. Or, or if you're messing around and, and your hair ain't fixed just right, and you ain't going certain places because you can't go certain places looking like that because you don't want folk looking at you because, because you don't look what you deem is presentable to the folk who you encounter each and every day. So it's interesting to me how we view these things in the natural, amen? amen. It's interesting to me that we put so much importance on these things in the physical. Our physical appearance is important to us. Y'all know some of us, when we go certain places, it don't matter how we look, but we go on certain places, we got to be looking just right, you know, clothes got to be hanging just right, hair got to be fried, dyed, and laid to the side, and everything's got to be in, in the right place. You got to have on the right, uh, you got to have on the right stuff, and, and your shoes got to shine the right way, and, and some of y'all, I ain't getting too personal, but some of y'all, you got to make sure that you have on the right undergarments because you want you want what you have underneath not to be showing too much, amen? So, so we put particular importance on these things as we go out into the society that we live in. And most of the time, truth be told, the reason we put so much importance on these things is not because of how we feel about ourselves, because we place importance on how other folks look upon us. So we put a whole lot of importance on what other folks think, and we put a whole lot of importance on how other folks feel, and we put a whole lot of importance on, on, on what other folks do. And it's interesting to me because, because we do all this for ourselves in the physical, and we do all this stuff for, for ourselves according to, you know, to how we feel about other folks. But when it comes to our spiritual life, when it comes to our spiritual lives, we don't place the same importance on how God looks upon us. And so the reason it's so interesting to me is because we have, in fact, as a society, gotten the relationship backwards. Where we, where we ought to care less about what people think. We care more about what people think. And where we ought to care more about what God thinks, we care less about what God thinks. And so what we will do is we will go about uh, our, our spiritual uh, our spiritual certifications. We'll, we'll go about the things that are spiritual, and we will pay less attention to them. We will place less importance on them. And therefore, when we come to God, we really don't care how we come to God. We just try to come to God any kind of way. And most of the time, we don't come to God at all until we get to a point where we have tried everything else and there's nothing left but God to try. Yes. Yes. That's 
why, you know, I, I understand what the lady, I don't remember who the lady, what the lady's name is. I understand what she was saying when she sung the song and she said, you tried everything else, you need to try God. But I don't agree with that. Because if you tried God first, he would have resolved the issue and you wouldn't have had to try everything else. And nine times out of ten, when you try all the other stuff, you went through so much hell trying to get it fixed, doing all the other stuff, and yet you were like the woman with the issue of blood. Amen? Y'all think about how she, what she did. Twelve long years. She spent every dime she had. She had been to every doctor she could encounter. She had talked to everybody who would deal with her. Amen? She had been excommunicated from her community, and folk thought she was nasty. But it wasn't until she had a touch from the hem of the garment of the almighty Jesus that her situation was resolved. And so I share the same thing with you as a side note. You can try everything else. You can do everything else. You can move around and you can take all the advice of whoever you want to, want to talk to. Amen. You can, you can call the sister who claims to be psychic. You can, you can call the psychic hotline, mother whoever and sister whoever. But nothing will be resolved until you turn it over Amen. to the almighty God. Amen. Amen. But that's not the way our minds think. That's not the way we operate. That's not the way we function. And, and, and so we, we, we do these things, and, and, and depending on what your illness might have been, you, the, the, the first problem, it's a note-taking day. Y'all write this down there. But the, the first problem that we have is that, 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 that as, as we start to become ill, oftentimes we don't, we don't really pay attention to the early signs of illness. You know what I'm saying? We don't, start to, we don't really start to pay attention, you know. You start to get that little tickle in your throat and <clears throat> you get that little, you know, you, you get that little thing where you got to clear your throat, not even thinking that a cold might be coming on. You just, we just kind of ignore it. Yeah. You know, we kind of blow it off as, as just something in the air or something that we're dealing with at the moment. But we, we assume that it's going to pass. We don't really look at it as, as, as a virus that's attacking our body and causing us to be sick. Can I tell us we do the same thing with our spiritual lives? And then that little irritation, those little things that come up against you and you just kind of blow them off and you don't really pay attention to them. The little simple things, amen, that, that, that the devil has used to start to prick your nerves or to, to try to get into a place where, where he knows what area to irritate you. Those little simple things, you got to start paying attention to those things. Amen? Now, let me say something to you. You know, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of his glory. I, I'm not trying to stand in front of you and tell you that I, I'm always in tune and that I don't ever miss some of those little simple irritations. Amen. But let me, let me tell you, Satan is, is real. He's, he's seeking whom he may devour. He's, he's, he's walking to and fro trying to figure out how he can get to you. Amen. And so what he'll do is he'll, he'll sit around he'll just pick at little areas of you and you know, he'll, he'll mess with you here, you know, and, and when that don't bother you, he's like, okay, that didn't work. Let me go over here, and I'll mess with you here, and that don't work. And, but as soon as he gets a rise out of you, as soon as he gets a reaction out of you, then he knows where he needs to go to attack you. Amen? Then, that, that's where he, see, and, and so I, I want to encourage you to be, to, to be careful and make sure that you don't place more importance on the things of life than you place on the things of God. Because see, those things, go back, to, go back to our early morning lesson this morning, those things that you place importance on are those things that you will protect and love and do the most. Amen? Amen. So if your relationship in your house is the most important thing to you, and you put that above God, that's where, that's where Satan's going to attack. Amen? If your job is the most important thing to you, that's where Satan is going to attack. Amen? If your finance, your money is the most important thing to you, that's what he's going to to attack, amen? If your beauty is the most important thing to you, that's where he'll attack. But he will attack those things that will get to you the most. Yes, yes. Amen? Yes. So we have to make sure that we, going back, back to my, my, my boxing fan days, amen, but make sure that you, when you're in the ring of life, that you protect yourself at all times. Amen? You got to protect yourself at all times. And, and I'm going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, part of the problem is we don't recognize the early symptoms of our issues. You know, we don't take the time to, to recognize what it is that we really have going on until it gets too late. See, oftentimes when we get sick physically, we, we don't really pay attention to it until we get to the point where we're feverish and our nose is running and 
and, and we were achy, and their elbows and their knees are aching, you know what I'm saying? But by, by then, the virus has already attacked your body to a point where it affects your functionality, you know? And, and, as opposed to you uh, fighting back when it, it first came upon you, or, or you know, starting to fight it off. I don't know what, what you use. Maybe, maybe you're an echinacea person, so you, know, you take that echinacea, or you take that vitamin C, whatever it is to, to fight it off, whatever it is might work. You know, uh, here's the thing I need you to understand. I got a nurse in the house. Y'all help me out here. Viruses, when they enter your body, simply have to run their course. Am I right? They have to run their course. The question that you have to ask yourself is are you going to allow the symptoms of having the virus in your body stop you from being able to function properly because you didn't do the things necessary to be able to fight fight them off. It's going to run its course. It's going to be there. That's why when they give you, uh, when you go to the doctor for something, they give you an antibiotic. That's why he tells you, take the whole thing. Yes. You can't just take one or two pills or, or, you know, take one or two days and feel like, you know, well, I feel better, I'm going to stop taking it because it's still there. Yes. And then you got to keep taking it because what he's giving you is he's giving you a prescription that lasts long enough and then to fight off the virus completely. Yes. We have to do the same thing in our spiritual lives. Amen? We have to do the exact same thing in our spiritual lives. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. So when the Lord lifts up the standard, we have to make sure that we reach the standard and maintain the standard as we're trying to fight off and then whatever it is that the attack of the enemy is. Now, here's the trick to the whole thing. Once God sets the standard, amen, we can't go back Go back to this morning's lesson. We can't go back to living substandard lives simply because this attack of the enemy has gone past us. Amen? Amen. If you're in a relationship and, and, and all of a sudden your relationship starts to go sour, amen, if your relationship starts to go bad and you start doing all that lovey-dovey stuff, amen, you start buying flowers and you know, uh, uh, reading poetry and, and I ain't messing with you, Stephen, but <laughs> we start doing all this stuff. You, if you start doing all this stuff because your relationship is going sour, and then once you're back on the right track and you stop doing it, you haven't resolved anything. All you did was put a band-aid on a bullet wound. Hey, Amen? That's all you did. So, you you, you know, you can't think, here, ladies, if you start getting up cooking breakfast every morning because... You know, because things won't go on right. You're trying to fix it, amen? You got to, look, I'm going to tell you what my mama told me when I was growing up. You better start out like you can hold out. Amen? amen. You better start out like you can hold out, because if you can't hold that out, amen, don't start it, amen? You better find some other way, amen? Because whatever you did to get it straight, you're going to have to maintain. That's a standard that the Lord set. And you got to keep going. Never laughing because I would love her to cook breakfast every morning. Praise God. <laughs> but, 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 but you got to come down. You got to recognize what it is that you're doing that strains your what You got to recognize what it is that, 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 that strains the situation out. And you got to recognize what it is that, that, that calls for your attention. Amen. If, if you've got, I'll go back to my early example. If you've got blemishes on your face, I have found this out. Oftentimes, when Blemishes come out on your face is the result of, of things that are going on in your body. And they start to show up in your skin. Amen? And some of y'all cos cosmetology folk or medical folk, y'all, am I right about that? Oftentimes stuff, stuff starts to show up in your skin. So the question you have to ask is not how I can cover it. Because the makeup really ain't doing it much good. In fact, the makeup probably doing it some harm. Amen? You probably need to clean as opposed to covering it. And then, so the question becomes, what do I need to do within my body to get rid of this? Here's my point. We spend a whole lot of time in our lives trying to get rid of the symptoms. But we never really pay attention to what the illness is. I know that's in the sentence of the preposition. I understand that from my English folk, but I ain't worried about that right now. Okay. okay? We spend a whole lot of time Worried about the symptoms. And we spend a whole lot of time worrying about what people see. But we don't take the time to take care of what's really going on with our bodies. Okay. Same thing in our spiritual lives. Amen? We spend a whole lot of time. A whole lot of time. 
trying to figure out why we can't get things the way we want them at the church house. Why we can't get God to do what we want him to do in our lives. When that's not the problem. The problem is not that God won't do what you want. The problem is that you won't do what God wants. And so we have to be prepared as we move forward in our spiritual lives. We got to be prepared for God to clean some things up and strip some things out. And so you have to be careful as you're asking to grow in God. You have to be careful what you're asking for. Because what you're asking God to do is to take over my life and place, place me in your will. And some things that you like and some things that you want are not what he has for you. So the question we ask today is, what is your condition? What is your condition? And I want to encourage all of you to just examine yourselves for just a moment. Just take a moment. Think on your life. Think about the things that you have going on. They're going to be different for all of us. Amen. What irritates me may not irritate you. What irritates you may not irritate me. What irritates the person next to you or the person behind you may not irritate you and, and vice versa. Amen. But, but the, the question is, what's going on in your life? What's happening in your life? What's your condition? Amen? What, what, what is it that you are dealing with? Amen? And, and then you got to ask yourself the question, is it a symptom? Or let me back it up. Is it an issue? Or is it a symptom of my issue? you got to know that. Okay? If, if what I'm dealing with is an issue, then when I resolve it, it's over. But if it's just a symptom of an issue, then when I resolve it, it's just like getting rid of the cough. The virus is still there. The illness is still there. It just came out that way. I mean, you, you want to know sometimes, why do I act a certain way in certain situations? Why do I do certain things in certain situations? Why do I feel certain ways about certain situations? Why do I go through certain things in certain situations? It's because you have not taken the time to recognize what the issue is. What's your condition? That's the question you have to ask yourself. What is my condition? See, when you go to the doctor, the doctor, you know, the, the doctor recognizes, and, and here's what he does. Y'all help me out now. My medical folks, help me out. What the doctor does is the doctor asks you why you're here. What is it that made you come here? Amen. What is it that you're recognizing about what's going on in your body that made you think that there was a problem that allowed you to come here? Amen. Did you have a cough? Did you have a headache? Did you, you know, did, you know, did, did, did uh, you have loss of vision? Is there, is there something going on in your body that that didn't allow you to feel like your body was functioning in the right way? We got to do the same thing with our spiritual lives. We got to be able to go to that doctor named Jesus. Amen. And we've got to be able to talk to him. And and, and we've got to be able to in, in our conversation with him. We've got to be able to share with him, even though he already knows. We've got to be able to share with him what it is that we're going through. Yes, yes. And just like we do in the doctor's office, we've got to allow the doctor to make an assessment yes. of our situation. We've got, to, he's got to be able to make an assessment of our condition. And when he makes the assessment of our condition, he's got to allow, excuse me, he's got to be allowed, amen, to treat us in a manner that will provide healing to us so that we can move on and function according to his will. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. If you've got a good doctor, then your good doctor wants you to be healthy yeah. and move around without any sort of reservations. Yeah. Amen? Regardless of what you think, your doctor doesn't want you to have to sit down every 10 feet. Your doctor doesn't want you to have shortness of breath. Your doctor doesn't want you to have pain here and there. That's not what he wants because he's in business for the purpose of healing those issues. Amen. Same thing with Dr. Jesus. He's not, see, some of y'all, some of y'all have fallen for the old okie doke. And some of y'all have fallen for this thought that because you claim yourself to be a Christian, that you're supposed to be broke. Amen. Some of y'all fall for that. Oh, I'm a Christian, so I'm supposed to be broke. I'm supposed to suffer, and I'm supposed to go through this, and I'm supposed to go through that. That's not the kind of God that we serve. Now, 
This is what I need you to understand. The God that we serve simply explains in his word this to us. He says, it's not that I want that for you. It's just that I want to know that when you encounter it, that you still have me in the forefront of your mind when you go through it. So, so you got to get to a place in your spiritual relationship where you understand this. You got to understand that regardless of what I go through, God is still in control. Regardless of what I deal with, God is still in control. Regardless of who comes up against me, regardless of how my life falls apart, regardless of how much stuff I lose, regardless of how I eat, regardless of how I hurt, regardless of what I have and don't have, regardless of who like me and don't like me, God is still in control. And I ain't worried about folk, but folk ain't got a heaven or a hell to put me in. But the God that I serve, what is your condition? What's your condition? What do you feel? What, 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 what is it that what is it that you can and cannot handle? What is it you can and cannot go through and keep God on your mind? You know, and sure up those areas of your life. If you've got something you know you absolutely cannot handle, you pray about it. Because I told I gave y'all an explanation before. I told y'all. God won't just pull that situation away from you. God will put you in the midst of it and, and give you an opportunity to learn how to deal with it. See, it would be so easy. Because he's an all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful God, it would be so easy for him to just take us and just snatch us out of the situation. Amen. Like, like Star Trek, it would be so easy for us to just beam us out of it, beam me up, Scotty, you know, take me on out. And I know that's a drug reference, too, so I ain't talking about that, but... <laughs> But, but I, I know, you know, I, it would be so easy for him to just pull us out of it. Amen? Amen. But rather than just pulling us out, because here's the thing, pulling us out won't really do us any good. Because he's pulling us out, doesn't, doesn't teach us how to deal with it. So here's the thing, if he pulls us out, when we get in a situation again, guess what? We right back in it. And we still don't know how to deal with it. So we haven't grown through the situation. What God does is God says, okay, baby, you stay right there. Amen. But while you're there, if you'll listen to me, I'll guide you through. And what you'll find is that you'll allow God to speak to your situation. What you'll find is that he'll teach you how to walk through it. So the next time that Satan comes at you with that crazy mess, it you know, all you can be like, okay, well, you, you tried it already. I, you know, come at me with something else. And man, we got to grow past. Let me tell you something. If you've been in church all your life and the same stuff keep getting you every time, something wrong. We don't just want to go through situations. We want to grow through situations. Now, here's what I want to share. Here's what I want you to understand. You got to know what your condition is. What is it that hampers you? What is it that keeps you from realizing the fullness of God? Think about it on the most basic level. What is it, what is it that keeps you from, 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 from resisting distractions so that you can focus on God? What is, it, what is it that keeps you from putting your hands together and acknowledging God when he does something for you? What is it that keeps you from, from, from trusting God when you get into a city? What is it that hampers you? What is your condition? And if you find out what your condition is, then you can find out what your illness is. And then you can find out what it is that Satan is using to keep you from realizing the fullness of the Almighty God. Here's my promise to you. If you can ever figure out, if you can ever find out what it is that, that uh, the enemy is using against you, then you'll be on the way to finding out what it is that God wants to do with you. I always get the drawing. In the dining department, or, 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 or Marvin Sapp, which one is it? Said, the, the reason that the enemy is messing with you. Marvin Sapp, thank you. And I, always get, I always say one, my wife said, no, it's the other, but I always get it wrong. Marvin Sapp says, the reason he keeps messing with you is because he's literally peeked into your future. So Y'all gotta understand something. We're natural beings dealing with spiritual issues. And we keep trying to handle spiritual issues through natural means. You cannot do it. 
It's not going to work. Amen? Here's the thing. If, 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 if an attack comes on your body, if a spiritual attack comes on your body, you can't have that. Understand what I'm saying? I'm not discounting the use of modern medicine. Amen? God gave doctors knowledge. Yeah. Amen? And it's, but but let, me, let me help make sure you understand this. When Satan gets ready to attack you and he wants to attack you physically, yes. amen, yes. take your medicine, yes. but you got to pray. Amen. <laughs> amen. You got a habit that you can't break. Yes. Amen. It's something that you just can't let go. He wants to attack you that way. Yes. Amen. You keep trying to fight it off, but you got to pray. Yes. Amen. You, you got, you know what I'm saying? You got to know this. I mean, if, if you got a spending issue, you don't know how to handle your stuff. Yeah. Hey, man, you got to pray. Yeah. You know? You got to pray. And here's the thing now. In addition to your prayer, God has given us a written word. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, man, so if you, if, if you, just like you read the back of a prescription bottle, y'all can do that? And so let me ask you a question. Who bless you? Who, who, who actually reads the prescription, uh, prescription bottle when you get that? Amen. Hey, man. Amen. Hey, because see, here's the thing. You read the bottle. Here's the, the doctor has told you what he gave you the medication for. What he doesn't take the time to share oftentimes. Some doctors do, some don't. Mine never does. Hey, Amen. But he's good at what he does. Right? But here's the thing. If you read the bottle or the box or whatever it came in, it tells you what other effects the medication has on your body. So here's the thing. You go out and take certain medications, and then you, know, you take it and jump in the car, you get about three, four miles down the road, and farther than that, because it's going to take a little longer than that. And all of a sudden, you start going, because you didn't take the time to recognize from the back of the bottle that the medication says it makes you sleepy. Now, here's the thing. You can't blame the doctor, and you can't blame the medication. Amen? Because the doctor gave you the medication because of your issue. Yes. And the medication clearly states in its written word, so y'all get it, the medication clearly, clearly says in its written word that this is what can happen if you, when you take this medication. Same thing in your spiritual life. You got to read the prescription. Man. Amen? But you gotta read it, you gotta get deep enough in that thing that you understand. When I do this, this is what's going on. This is what's gonna happen. So don't get don't get upset when you try to get close to God. Thank you again for tuning in. I hope that God has been glorified and you have been blessed. Join us each Monday at noon here broadcasting on the TMA radio show. Or we'd love to have you with us on Sunday morning at the Kingdom Center. Our services are held at Zebulon Middle School, which is located at 1000 Shepherd School Road, Zebulon, North Carolina, 27597. You can also uh, catch up with us online, kingdomnc.org. That's kingdomnc.org. Or we're on Facebook. Look for the Kingdom Center on Facebook.com. Thank you again. Have a great day. You have been listening to Pastor Clinton Wilkins. Also, we want to thank you so much for tuning in every Monday afternoon, 12 o'clock noon for your lunch break. We hope that that word inspired you. Read all of the prescription wording before you drive. It's not nobody's fault if you don't read. So we got to read our Bible daily. We got to read our Bible so that the Spirit will talk to us and know which way to go, which way to turn, and what we need to do next. We want to thank you so much again. Join us next week, the same time, same station, 11 o'clock a.m. Central and 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for the Kingdom Center Radio Show. And until next time, peace be to each and every one of you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you, and God bless.